the qualities of a teacher should have, which are prescribed in the Upanishads. Shrotriya, you must sit at the feet of the teacher and directly listen the words that emerges out from his live mouth. Then only the Upanishadic ideas become alive. Abrajana, one who has no bleeding wounds, weaknesses of the mind. Akamahata, he has no such desires to possess the world outside and discover a fulfillment from the world outside. <coughs> Brahma Vittama, Brahma Vitt, one who has got the knowledge of Brahman, is not only Brahma Vitt, but he must be the best. Brahma Vitt, one who knows Brahman, Uttama, the best, meaning who has got the direct knowledge of the Brahman. So Shanta, he is the one who is peaceful. Why peaceful? Uparata. He has no more the sense organs running out into the sense world. The mind is not gushing out in the emotions, nor the intellect worried about the world outside. He has grown up. He is no more playing with the toys of life, with the world of plurality. Nirandhana iva analaha. No more any fuel in his boots. No more vasanas in him. Therefore, no more desires. Therefore, no more agitations. The mind becomes quiet. Ahetuka deya sindhu. A teacher must be deya sindhu. Must be an ocean of kindness. Why do we become kind? Not that we deserve it. Yeah, yo, no, no, no. We deserve kicking. <laughs> but I hate to with no reason why. Unreasonably. He is an ocean of kindness. Bandhu anamatam satam. And he is a bandhu. Bandhu in the closest relationship in the world. Blood relation. To those anamatam satam, noble people who are surrendering themselves to the teacher. To such noble hearted students, he is a bandhu. He is the most intimate relation. As though a blood relation, he will help you at all times. These are the qualities that a teacher must have. Choose such a teacher and serve him and uh, help yourself in realizing the highest. Ajaryo Vasana means wherever he is sitting down, you go and crawl near him and say, May I? <laughs> you don't ask the question whether are you feeling happy about it. The poor guru must be feeling tickling sensation all over. <laughs> He doesn't like anybody touching him. But you, and now he can't say anything because he's seven. So the teacher suffers. Teeth tight down. Beautiful. Ha <laughs> ha, wonderful. <laughs> Bring buckets of, I mean, baskets of fruits. Seva. Keep it in front of him. Swamiji, Swamiji. <laughs> this fruit I brought it. What? You eat? Why? I want to see how you eat. I eat by the mouth only. No other Navadwara. I have got nine holes, but I eat only by the mouth. This kind of uh, zoo visit. When you visit the zoo, you would like to give him some nuts to the monkeys <laughs> and watch how the monkey breaks it and eats it one by one. This is not Ajarya Seva. So he is the teacher. He is our attempt honestly to live as best as we know the life, the lifestyle that has been prescribed by the teacher. 
and learn to move towards the point where the teacher is standing and share the vision that he has. That is called Acharya Seva. To lift up your mind and tune it up to what the teacher is talking. To see eye to eye with the teacher. Acharya Upasana. All saints and sages and uh, prophets have been working even 20 and 22 hours a day. Not because they have to gain anything from it. Nor the fear that I will lose something by not acting. Nor is it by the compulsion of anything. These mighty masters of realization, the saints and sages, they work in the world outside, their work in the outer world is a manifestation of their infinite love for all of us. Out of sheer love, they come back again into this world to guide and lead someone. Because they feel so grateful that their teacher has removed all their confusions in the mind. They want at least one person to reach out to that great truth. As my presentation or a, my Guru Dekshina to my Guru. They are doing it out of their infinite love for the people, for the living beings. Uh.